Greet one another in the Lord. <laughs> Everybody taking a nap this morning? <laughs> so, good morning. So, nice to have you all here this morning on this lovely day. So, Our announcements are in the back of the bulletin. There's not a really lot that's going on. And I seem to be missing that page, but I don't need it anyway. So, okay. We're still doing our book study by Ken Ham, and we're not doing, next week we won't have Bible study. Uh, a lot will probably be gone anyway because it's 4th of July kind of in there, so. So we won't have the Bible study. We are having um, a little baby baptized here next Sunday. So um, they will be welcomed, and so it'll be fun to do that. We haven't done that for a while, so I'm looking forward to that very much. So, and so, so please pray for the family. They are two young people, that, and Jesus says, bring the little children on to me, and that's what we'll be doing. So. But if you're out with your family and having a great time, have a great time and celebrate family. And so many of our world cannot hardly celebrate family anymore. So please celebrate with your kids and have a great time. Okay? All right. So that will, should be about all that's coming up. Scott? Martin meeting May 8th. So okay. Of July. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 8th of July is the board meeting, so, okay. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, anything else this morning? Okay. I'm out of the uh, get to know you form, so if you haven't filled it out yet, please get with me. <laughs> okay, get to know you form, okay. Oh, okay. So, please, greet one another in the Lord. Make some noise out there, okay. <laughs> Thank you. We're here, Lord. <laughs> we really are. So, All right, let's please join together in the gathering this morning. Jesus wants us to follow him. Are you ready? God will help us on our journey. Can you let go of your security? God will help us on our journey. We thank you, O oh Lord, for being here with us this morning on the journey through here, Lord, as you touch each and every life here this day and those that are also watching on the TV, Lord. We ask your blessings to be with them, that they also sense the presence, your presence in their own homes or wherever they're watching. Oh, Lord, as you read out and reach out and touch each one of them. Greetings to them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please, our song this morning. It's come, come, everybody worship. Helen's going to play it all.
holy and loving God, we desire for our lives what you desire for us. Freedom, peace, joy, gentleness, and self-control. To love our neighbors as ourselves. We pray that your spirit may, may work within us this very day, guiding us, teaching us, and challenging us. So please, the last line is up to all of us, okay? Help us to live by the Spirit. Amen. As we, you remain seated, please, as our call to worship. We seek the guidance of the Spirit. Through Christ and we risk the yoke of slavery. We seek the guidance of the Spirit. And we seek the guidance of the Spirit. Gentleness, joy. We seek the guidance of the Spirit. We think people call out. We do, oh Lord, we seek you, Holy Spirit, this morning, that your presence is here, that you are touching each and every one of us this day, that you are awakening the spirit within us to worship the Lord God, and we celebrate you as we go in together in a litany of confession. So please, merciful God, you called us for freedom in Christ, but we have submitted to sin's yoke of slavery. Have mercy on us. We have been jealous and angry and quarrelsome and impure and idolatrous. Have mercy on us. Lord, there are more things that we have been that are not necessarily listed here, but we know that you have heard our prayers even when they are silent. You hear them. Hear, the wor hear God's words of comfort to us. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand, though, for the Gloria Patri. <laughs> This morning we are going into something that is, I wondered if I should even speak on it or preach on it at all. And I've contemplated back and forth all week if this is what God wants me to do. And I come to the answer that it's in the scriptures, so it's truth, and we all need to know the truth. And it definitely is also a warning also for each and every one of us. And what kind of preacher would I be if I didn't warn you about the things that are coming ahead? But the things that we also need to watch out within ourselves to be very careful on it. So we start actually back in Acts 4 this morning, 32 through 5, and then we go 5, 1 through <laughs> and on. So but it's sharing all things together. It's what the disciples did. 
after they come all together, they shared absolutely everything together. This small group of people, and we don't exactly know how many were there. Was it just the 12, or had they grown? Because we know the week before, the time before, there was 5,000 that came to know the Lord. But we're going to, I'm not going to put the size on it, but they, everything that they had, they shared with one another. And when I thought about that, I thought about we were kind of in the same place as they were, a little bit different. But when we left the United Methodist Church, we were standing by itself. But everybody that was here shared everything together. And those that came in have been very generous to share their talents and their gifts and their presence and all the things that they sing and worship. So we are kind of like the disciples that we definitely, our possessions, we share with each other. We're not afraid to stand up and say, I'll do this and I'll do that and I'll bring this and I'll give this and I'll help you all the way around. And that's just like they were. Everything was absolutely shared. And one thing I found in this was they shared everything they had in common. And with great power, the apostles gave their testimony of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them. Please know that the apostles' voice out there was all about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's their storyline. It didn't need to go any further than then, than that than to talk about how powerful and mighty the Lord Jesus Christ was. But there was not, because they shared everything together, there was not a needy person among them, none. For as many as there were possessions of lands and houses, and they sold them, and they brought the proceeds of what was sold, and they laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed amongst everybody and many hands were there and each hand that needed received because there was this amazing love they also had for one another and fellowship and companionship this was the new church that was growing and the roots of this church were definitely set into the love of Jesus Christ. And they have a, John, a man that came, his name was thus Joseph, was his name, who was surnamed by the apostle Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. And he was a Levite of Cyprus, and he had sold the field which belonged to him. And he brought all the money that he got from it, and he laid it at the apostles' feet, which encouraged many, many others to share theirs also. But in chapter 5, we turn a new leaf here. And But a man was named Ananias, and his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property. With his wife's knowledge, he kept back some of the proceeds and brought only a part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter, we talked about but this morning in Bible study, but Peter said, why has Satan filled your heart for you to lie to the Holy Spirit? At this point in time, Ananias had not said anything. But Peter looked upon this man, and he had decided, the man had decided to deceive them. Only he was not deceiving them. He was deceiving the Holy Spirit, and he was actually lying to God. What would make him do that? What was so important to him 
that he would lie about them to the to the disciples and he knew that they were powerful in the hand of the Lord God Almighty. Why would he tell such a lie? We know what it is. It's pride. It's pride. I and it's covenants. I can't give all of this to God. Even if he did, even if the one before me gave everything and laid, I'm not going to give all of mine. I'm only going to give some of it. And that should be enough. They should be happy with that. Can you find that attitude within it? Yes. So what's going to happen to me? Nobody will know that I didn't give it all. But who did? Peter. He looked at him. And he looked deep in his soul. And he said, why have you let Satan fill your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit. A powerful statement. And at that point in time, he said, you have decided to keep back part of the proceeds from your land. While it remained unsold, did, it not, did you not, was it not yours? It remained your own. Then after you sold it even, it was still at your disposal to do whatever you wanted to do with it. You didn't have to give it all. But pride within made him lie. He didn't give it all. But he says, how is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart and you have not lied to men but you have lied to God and when Ananias heard these words he fell down and he died a great fear came upon all who heard of it the young men rose wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him you can almost sense this young man there as he died. It was from his own anxiety that he died. It didn't say God struck him dead. It says he just died and he just fell down. I wonder how much they talked about and conceived this idea in the first place of not giving it all because his wife knew it also. And they come together and visit together. But yet there was something within him that was so strong that his heart just stopped beating and he died there that day because he had actually, when he says, when Peter says to him, and I have this in bold letters. I'm not sure if Peter spoke in bold letters or not. But knowing Peter, I would think he would. Because he wants to make a point. Because it's not just about him. It's about all the rest of the followers that are all together. It's not just about one man. It's about, so I'm going to use a stronger voice with this. How is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but you have lied to God. And Ananias could not deal with that, of what he had done. And he breathed his last, and he fell down. And a great fear came upon all who heard it. You can imagine it spread across this congregation like a wildfire. Instead of being known as a contributor now, Ananias is known as what? A liar. 
who lied to the Lord God. But the young men came in, they rose up, they wrapped him up and carried him out and they buried him. And after an interval, about three hours, his wife came in not knowing anything of what had happened. Everybody else probably heard, but they didn't want her to know, so nobody told her what had happened to her husband. And Peter again said to her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. She was just as much in on the lie and the deceit. But Peter said again to her, how is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Heart, listen, Sapphira, the feet of those that have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. And immediately she fell down at his feet and died. And when the young men came in, they found her dead and carried her out and they buried her beside her husband. And great fear came upon the whole church and upon all who heard these things. For many signs and wonders were done among the people by the hands of the apostles. And they were together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared to join them, but the people held them in high honor. More than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multiple, multitudes of both men and women. It's a strange story to be in the scriptures. It's one that also tells the truth. God's word tells the good and the bad. It lets us know absolutely everything of what happened to them. What would this have done to the church? Not necessarily the death part of it, but what would have it done to the church if the lie had totally went through and spread amongst everybody that knows? They are trying to be better than what they really are. They want to show off. And so our pride gets us in trouble and it got them definitely in trouble because they had changed jo Joseph's name to Barnabas, a place of encouragement. He had gotten a different spot than he had before and their heart was set on not on giving out of the abundance of their heart. They wanted to give so they would have a different position into this congregation of people that everything was shared together. Absolutely everything. But trying to be better than other people is never a good answer. It's difficult for the person that's trying to be better, but it also sets an example for the whole group and it brings dishonor and disgrace and it brings discord so much discord the church was just growing now it was just getting its feet underneath it this could have destroyed it completely by this action that Ananias and Sapphira decided to take and God could not have that this was the church that he was building up through his son, Jesus Christ, that had also gave everything already. It was a pivotal moment 
in a church's life here. If it's going to go on, it was probably the only answer. It was beware. Beware. Especially. God knows your heart. Peter knew his heart. He didn't tell him. But Peter knew that they were already trying to deceive. And God had told him that. But God says, watch us too. Don't lie to God. It's useless. Totally useless. Because God knows your thoughts already. So you can't really hide what somebody already knows. You should be smart enough to say, no, God knows that. I'm not going to do that. And I want to be part of this precious family of God here. You can bet this story went on and on and on over and over again to encourage people, do not lie to the Holy Spirit and do not not lie to the Lord God Almighty. We've had example this week of many lies over and over again. It wasn't pleasant watching all the lies. It bothered your heart a lot and your soul and your spirit. And for the older gentleman, you felt bad for him. I felt bad for him. For the simple fact they had used him as a puppet in their process of what they were doing. Look what lies have done to our nation. And this last one has been a huge lie that he was good enough. But he wasn't the only one that lied. They both had their time with this. But lies destroy. And so this nation needs to rise up and stand for truth anymore. Not maybes, but truth. And for Ananias and Sapphira, they were an example of what not to do. And it's an example to us also. But God has brought us together for a reason. The reason is, is the love of Jesus Christ. The reason is, is Christians are the biggest voting segment of this whole nation. Just think about it. We are the largest group that vote in this nation. So when we vote, we need to vote for honest and truthful men. I know sometimes that's really hard because it's hard to tell the difference which one is and which one isn't. But let God speak to your heart about it or write in a candidate, whatever. But protect the body of Christ. Protect and keep one another. Ananias and Sapphira were not, did not even care about the rest of them. All they cared truly about was about themselves. So we have a blessing here that God has brought here, a family here, like the disciples. And we can call ourselves disciples, all of us, because we do. We share together with what we have. And it is a wondrous thing to see that in this day. So let us do our hymn just for there after the sermon, please. Oh, oh you're right. Yes, and yep. we'll do that one okay. Three ninety three in the hymn though. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
be seated. Okay. Any joys and concerns this day that you would like to share? Who? Diane's birthday? Okay, <laughs> Jessica. Well, respect your elders. You got that? <laughs> happy birthday to Happy birthday. Very true. Very true. So anybody else this morning? Well, wonderful. Oh, Wilmer, yeah. yes. Very good. Yeah. I put on Facebook on or on the website the other day about Sudan and Albania and the victim. Okay. Yes. Um, came out of the surgery okay, but needs lots of prayer again because it had infected quite Everything. a bit of stuff. Okay. So well, her name was Suzanne Paulson. So if you could just keep her on your prayers. Okay. Well, What's her name, first name? Suzanne. Suzanne. That's what I thought. Okay. But the su the surgery was successful. Good. Anybody else this morning? <coughs> Donnie's surgery went well. Um, this morning it's quite sore, but he had to mow the lawn the other day. So <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go out and get him a little ball that he can stir with the other hand. <laughs> so, but he, it's better now than when he got up this morning. So that's surprising spot in the middle and a spot back here and so so he's doing very well so anybody else okay we're going to get out of here really early today okay so so um yeah Think of all the forefathers that came before us and fought for this country and laid down their lives and left their livelihoods and their homes and came across the ocean to make a new nation, this nation. Except when they didn't do fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> She's never been a firework person. <laughs> so she was screaming and we were smiling, so oh well. <laughs> Anybody else this morning? Okay. So we do have, uh, a I said that already, a baptism next week. So just be aware of that. So, All right. Then we should probably take our offering. Yeah, I will do that. So I'll pray first. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, the loved one's birthday today <laughs> and all of those, Lord that are here but we pray for diane this morning we thank you for this making this bright spot here lord that has a smile on her face all the time we celebrate with her her birthday oh lord so with suzanne oh lord with izzy oh lord who went and got to be in the Wilmer Parade and all of those things, oh, Lord, and the Miss Congeniality, Lord. We thank you that you have watched over her and you have kept her, oh, Lord, and that she had a great time as she celebrated this, oh, Lord, and your blessings to be upon her over and over. And for Susanna, oh, Lord, for the brain tumor, Lord, 
the amazing thing is that I see that you created it. You know how the brain is all connected, all wired, all put together. You created that engine within her, oh Lord. Lord Jesus, we ask for your touch right now. Please, everybody, put your hand up. Just out as if she is here with us this day. That we are actually laying our hands and the praise of Jesus Christ upon her. That he will receive all the glory and the honor. And for those that are here in our own congregation, oh Lord, that need your touch upon them, we pray for them also, Lord. You know personally who each and every one of them is. So we bring them before your throne of grace and thank you for their presence here and for your touch upon them this day, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you also. We pray for this nation, a nation that was set up to be a godly nation from the very, very beginning. You made a covenant with the men that came across the oceans to be here as a nation that was to be built on the word of God. Lord, we ask that you would just help us to bring it back to that place, a nation built upon you, a nation that worships and honors you, the Lord God Almighty, that blesses us, that we continue to keep within us, that we are the biggest nation that sends out more missionaries around the world than anybody else. Lord, we ask that you will quiet the devil. I would ask you to tape his mouth shut, but that probably wouldn't work very well. But Lord, he has destroyed so much in this nation and in people's lives and in babies' lives and so many things, Lord. Take his power away, please that we can rise up a nation once again that will stand strong and be proud to call the Lord God Almighty our God and our leader in this nation of America with humble and merciful people that worship you. May revivals spread like wildfire across from one ocean to the other to proclaim your name again in victory. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. So I would ask if you would please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our trespass debtors. And to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory, and the glory. Please, let us turn to our offering.
the blessings flow from you unto us. And Lord, from us we give you back blessings that you will use it mightily for your kingdom here in the hearts of the people here that we are light in the darkness to proclaim the message of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. In his name we pray, amen. Thank you. Okay. Turn to 347, our spirit song, please. Go in grace and the spirit of the living God as he walks before you and protects you and as he keeps you. And as every day he speaks with your heart also. The Holy Spirit is sent to us personally, each and every one, because we follow with his voice the Lord God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We have much to celebrate with the life of Christ within us. So go out in his name and proclaim the message of the gospel to those that you meet, but love them with the heart and soul of Jesus Christ. In his holy name we pray. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. and amen. amen. God bless. Have a wonderful 4th of July. Amen.